Welcome to my shop. My name is Jeff Jewett, the owner of Jewett Guitars in Cleveland, Ohio. I'm also the owner of Homestead Finishing Products in Cleveland, Ohio, which manufactures a lot of colorants for the music industry. I've also done a number of online courses over the year, and in one of those courses I showed you how I rub out and buff a guitar body. That was about five or six years ago, and like a lot of luthiers, and probably like a lot of finishers, or a lot of people like you, I've modified my process a little bit over the years. I've made it better, and I want to show that to you, because I get results now that are always just stunning. Now, if you've never rubbed out or buffed a guitar body, there's a couple things to keep in mind. Number one, let your finish cure. I use a catalyzed urethane finish, and one of the reasons I use it is because I can start buffing or rubbing it out, wet sanding and then buffing it, within a week or even two weeks. This has dried about a week and a half. If you're using nitrocellulose lacquer, water-based lacquer, you might want to extend that to about four to six weeks. Check with the manufacturer of the lacquer, though, to see what they recommend. If you're using something other than that, like varnish, well, you're going to have to be on your own. Varnishes and things like that may take a lot longer to cure. Shellac, I would say, I would give it the same as lacquer, maybe four to six weeks. But what we've got here is we've got a number of clear coats that were applied in one day for the final clear coat stage. And that's going to give me enough thickness to rub out. So let's get started with the process. But before I get started into showing you how I rub out and I then polish the finish, I want to talk a little bit about what it is that you're trying to do. In finishing, as well as in guitar making, knowledge is power. And if you understand what it is that you're trying to accomplish with the wet sanding and the buffing and then the polishing process, you'll be able to solve problems that may come up during your own process of doing it. So, Let's hop over to my temporary blackboard that's in the spray booth and I want to show you in a little bit more detail what it is that you're trying to accomplish when you level sand or wet sand a finish and then buff it. I'm going to assume that what you want to do in your first or your second or when you're beginning to rub out finishes that you're going to take it up to a gloss finish. Now there's other sheens that you can rub to and we'll discuss those as little detours along the way. But for the purposes of this discussion, I want to talk about gloss and how it's created. A surface is gloss when it reflects light clearly and distinctly. In other words, your light source, which is here, and then the human eye is here. When light striking the surface is seen clearly and distinctly, we call that an equal angle of incidence. And without getting too technical, all that means is that this angle right here is equal to this angle. Perfect gloss is 100% reflection in an angle of incidence, but that can't that never happens. Perfect gloss just doesn't exist. Gloss finishes are measured with what we call a gloss meter and anything really above about 75 or 80 is considered gloss. Now let's talk about the surface just a little bit. I don't care how great a finisher you are. If you're the world's best finisher with a spray gun, you will never get a perfect gloss or flat surface. The main thing to understand if you want a really good gloss surface is that you have to get this surface dead flat first. In other words, you have to remove all the texture from your spray gun, debris that might be in the finish, or anything like that. And you do that by first level sanding. And when you level sand, you're going to use 
in our case, 800 grit sandpaper, and you're gonna back it up with a semi-rigid block so that when you sand the surface, you sand it dead flat. That's the first thing that you need to do in your rubbing out process, whether you're going to satin or gloss. But it's really important if you go to gloss because a textured surface will never be a good gloss surface. So our first thing, as I said, will be to level sand. We're gonna do that with 800 grit, which in the scheme of things is pretty coarse. And it's gonna leave the surface very dull. So what we do after this is then we refine those scratches or we remove and replace those scratches with finer grit scratches. We'll go to 100 grit, we'll go to 1200 grit, we'll go to 1500 grit, and we're actually, and this is the change that I've made in my rubbing out process, we're gonna go all the way up to 5000 grit. Now, before we get too, or before we go too much further, I need to talk about grading systems in sandpaper. This is a P system of grading. And the P system comes to us courtesy of Europe many years ago. It's also called FEPA. But it's different when you get above 240 grit than our American original system, which is called CAMI or ANSI. And in that system, these high numbers aren't the same. I recommend that you use the P system when you do your rubbing out process. And the P system is used by 3M, it's used by Merca, all European manufacturers, Klingspor uses it. Norton uses it, I think, pretty much uh, these days. But there are some cami abrasives out there, 3M still makes them, and you won't have a P in front of the grit number in the cami system. So, as I said, try to stick with the P system when you do your rubbing out process. Whatever you do, don't mix systems when you go to rub out. You just will create all sorts of problems. So, as a recap, gloss has to start with a completely level surface, and we're gonna do that with 800 grit. Then what we'll do is we'll wet sand up to 5,000 grit before we then go to the buffer. So let's go back over to the bench and we'll start the rubbing out process. <laughs>